Hello students, this is Dr. Yu. Today, you're gonna to learn about online presenting. This is a two-part lecture series. In the first part, you're going to learn about pre-recorded context. Here's the idea. You might have a professor who will give you an online speech assignment where you're gonna give a speech, but you're gonna record it and then submit it to be watched by either your classmates or your professor at a later time. So there's that context where you're gonna to need to know how to give a presentation knowing that you're not gonna be able to have the real-time feedback of your audience. But another context might be at work, you might have a supervisor who will tell you, you need to make a training video. And this training video is gonna be watched by future recruits. So make it and have it so that we can watch it at any time. In any case, we're gonna make sure that you learn some important tips and tricks to make these online presentations good. Now, the first thing, when it comes to online presenting, there's a couple of different decisions that you have to make. Now, you might be thinking, well, it's online. What's the big deal? What, there's online presenting and that's it. Well, yes, there's online presenting versus face-to-face -face presenting, but then you have issues with timing. Is this a synchronous presentation? So when we use the word synchronous, what we're saying is it occurs live at the same time. When you give a synchronous online presentation, you're able to see your audience either maybe through the video features or maybe through the chat features, depending on the software that you're using. In either case, your audience can give you real-time feedback and you can respond to them in real time. But then another issue that comes into play is the use of video. Are you going to show your face while you present? If you show your face, then there are things like lighting and background and things that you have to take into consideration so that way your background and face don't distract. Or are you not showing your face at all? In which case, then you don't have to worry so much about that. Now, in this lecture, we're just going to focus on the opposite of this. In the second part, part two, we're going to focus on online synchronous face presentations. But in part one, the one you're watching right now, we're gonna focus on asynchronous presentations. So asynchronous is just the academic term for saying that the, the recording is going to occur at a different time than when the audience watches it. And this presentation that you're watching right now was given asynchronously. Now, I'm imagining an audience that I'm talking to as I give this presentation, but it's all asynchronous in time. And then you still have to think about if I'm giving an asynchronous presentation, am I going to show my face or am I not going to show my face? For today's lecture, we're going to look at online asynchronous no face presentations. There are three things that we're going to look at. First, we're going to look at software. I'm gonna walk you through some different software choices that you have when you're doing an asynchronous presentation. This is really good for people who are new or people who are on the market for a different screen recording software. Then I'll give you some actual presentation tips to help you make sure that your presentation is doing things that are generally best practices. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about some audience engagement techniques. Now you might be wondering, how can you do audience engagement if this is asynchronous? Oh, I'm gonna show you, don't worry. Now, let's start with software, specifically screen recording software. Chances are, if you're going to give an asynchronous presentation, you're going to have to record your screen to show your PowerPoint slides, unless you're gonna just record yourself talking. In those cases where you're gonna be doing screen recording presentations or a screen recorded uh, speech of some kind, here are some different software tools that you can use to help you accomplish that. My favorite software is Loom for screen recording. What I like about Loom is that it's pretty easy to use. You just download the software and install it onto your desktop and you can get it from loom.com, which is very easy to access. Now, when you install it onto your computer, you can see me right there just kind of looking all, you know, in the zone and all that. But anyways, you just go to the little icon and then you just can click screen cam or screen only or cam only. And then just to decide your resolution, hit start recording and pretty much everything works. 
So this is what a Loom recording looks like. You can see here that I'm on the left corner here, but if I want to go full screen, I can go full screen. And if I want to go smaller, I can go smaller, or I can even disappear if I want. And what's also nice is I have some tools that can help me point and draw on things. So if I want to circle something, I can just circle it and it'll disappear. And there's also a ability to change the color of it if I like. So this is really good software to use, very nifty, and I like it. So that's a good overview of Loom. Now, with Loom, you have different options. You can get the pro version for free if you are a teacher or a student. Otherwise, you can get a basic version of Loom for free or for free. But if you want any of the premium features, you just have to pay for a team or a company. I really like Loom. It's really easy to use. It uploads your video automatically to a website. So you don't have to worry about using up disk space. So I like it for those reasons. But let's say you're not into Loom and you want to try something else. Well, I've heard good things about Screencast-O-Matic as well. They have a free version as well as a paid version, but it seemed pretty intuitive to me as well. I just tend to use Loom more, but Screencast-O-Matic is another option. Another option that you have is actually just recording within the PowerPoint. All you do is just hit record slideshow right here, and you'll be able to record just your PowerPoint alone within the recording software of PowerPoint. What's also nice is when you record, you can still have all of the presenter view options and you can still do pretty much all the things that you want to do in a presentation that you could do face to face. Now, that's asynchronous presenting in terms of software. Now let's look at asynchronous presenting in terms of presentation tips. One of the first tips that I would give to anyone who's going to be doing screen recording to any screen recordings at all is to clean your screen. So many times I've seen people where they were sharing their screen and there are pictures or there are like websites or links to things that you may not want people to know that you view or anything like that. And then sometimes people just have really disorganized desktops. And then it's kind of like looking in somebody's dirty room and you're like, how do you like survive with all this mess, you know? And then you look at somebody's desktop and you're like, how are you able to find things? You know, I understand there's methods to people's madness and all that, but you just have to think that people form impressions based off what they see whether they want to or not. So just make sure that your screen is clean. There's nothing on it that you wouldn't want everyone to see when you're doing your screen recording. This also includes the op the, you have to always weigh in the possibility that you might exit out of something real fast or something might show. So just keep that in mind. The second thing that I highly recommend people do when you're doing an asynchronous presentation is just to shoot and reshoot. As I make this presentation, I've reshot several times just because something didn't come out right or something just didn't sound the way I wanted it to sound. That's the huge advantage to asynchronous presentations is you can have multiple takes and you can keep on doing it until you get it right or until you're satisfied. Take advantage of that one unique thing about asynchronous presentations. If you don't like something, just cut out that part and try it again until it sounds good. The third thing that I would highly recommend or highly emphasize when you're doing asynchronous presentations is all your audience has to go off of for this whole thing is what you put on the screen and what they hear. And of course, your what you put on the screen is good, but you also have to have good vocalics. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of having good vocalics when you're doing screen presentations. Remember that vocal variety is comprised of pitch, pace and volume. So you want to vary your pitch, you want to vary your pace, and you also want to have a good variation in volume. I will have a video lecture on vocal variety and some drills and little practices that you can do on your own to improve your vocal variety. But overall, that's going to be one of your biggest assets is having good voice when you give these types of presentations. Another tip is taken from theater and film, which is keep it moving. Now I mean this in 
two different ways. The first way is in terms of animations. As you've watched this PowerPoint, you notice that the pictures kind of move and they kind of zoom in and such. So that's intentional. What we're trying to do is, if you notice in movies, what attracts human attention is the idea of movement, things in motion. This might go back to thousands of years when we were, you know, hunter gatherer societies and such, and you had to worry about predators. And if you saw movement in the grass that always caught your attention, because that mean that meant that a predator was coming or something was coming. So you always paid attention to movement. Well, try to keep things moving in the PowerPoint in terms of having animations, things that are maybe a little bit more cinematic. So that way you're always, the audience is always wanting to watch because there's always something moving. Now you have to make sure you're not distracting your audience at the same time, but there's just a little bit more emphasis on the idea of animation. But I also mean, keep it moving in the sense of you always want to try to not stay on the same slide for a very long time. You want to continually change the scene, move on from one slide to the next. How do you do that? Normally in a face-to-face -face presentation, it might be okay to do a lot of long progressive slides because at least you as the presenter can move around, you can interact, you can do all these great things. But when you're doing an asynchronous screen presentation, I highly recommend instead of doing one long five point progressive slide, I would probably do five one point slides. So that way you're constantly creating change and one screen doesn't get too stale. I mean, take a look at this presentation slide, for example, or this slide presentate this little slide here. You notice that I have two bullet points. And if you were just to stare at this for five minutes, it would probably get really boring. Now I can help the situation a little bit by maybe doing a progressive slide like this, but you can see that this can get really stale really fast. The other thing I would recommend is point and annotate. One thing that I, I recommend when you are doing your slide presentations and such is to leverage point and annotation features. Regardless of which meeting software you use, you're going to still need to run PowerPoint within that software to give your actual presentation. And what I want to show you are some tools that you can use as a presenter to keep the PowerPoint clear and to also make your point effective. So let's just go to a slideshow here. And I'm just going to play from the current slide and then I'm just going to minimize myself here. Now let's just say we have some text here. This is a sectional slide that I'm showing you. So here are some nice, neat, neat little things that you can do while you're presenting. What you do is you go to this little corner down here and there's a little pencil and you can click on this pencil and then you have quite a few options. First off, you have this arrow option and that's basically just like your clicker as is, but then you have a pen option. So if you want to underline something or you want to circle something out and say, this is a really important point, you know, you really want to do this and all that stuff. You have a little pen here that you can use to draw. You can also use a laser pointer. Now with the pen, you have to click to actually draw with the laser pointer. I don't have to click. I just move my mouse and you can see that you can follow the little red dot and you can see what I want you to look at at a given time. So if you don't want to draw on the PowerPoint, you can do a little laser pointer. You also have a highlighter. The highlighter is good for highlighting text. So if you just want to highlight a word, but you don't want to circle it, that's also an option. Now let's say you don't want all these markups on your PowerPoint. You have two options. So you have eraser and eraser pen, erase pen. So eraser just erases one little item at a time. The eraser pen, is kind of like an eraser that just erases everything. I mean, that's exactly what it is. So if you're ever just, you know, drawing and you're just like, rah, you know, that kind of thing, then you just do eraser pen and it pretty much all goes away. Sorry, sometimes the thing doesn't click. There we go. Now, you can also change the color of the pen. If you don't like red for some reason, you can switch to yellow and then there you go. Now you have yellow pen and if you, want to change the laser pointer color for some reason you get three colors, but if you want to change to green, then I just got to select my laser pointer over here. And then there you go. Now I have a green laser pointer and maybe that works quite well with this PowerPoint theme since everything else is green. So that's kind of nice. And then remember, all I need to do is just do a racer or a race pen, depending on how much stuff I've written. And that's good. You can also have subtitles in the PowerPoint too, which is nice if you want to turn those on. Now on these three dots, these, there's some other things I want to show you. 
you can easily navigate between slides with this little by title feature. Now, when you do full bleed image slides like I do in the previous lecture, then some of them aren't gonna have titles by default, so you're gonna need to title your slides. But let's just say somebody says, I wanna go back to the asynchronous challenge. Well, I can just go right here and it takes me directly to the slide instead of me having to you know, click back a bunch and all that stuff. And then when I wanna go back to my original title, I can just go asynchronous presenting and it's gonna take me there right away. So that's one thing that's really nice. The other thing that's really nice is you have a choice between a black screen and a white screen. Now, you might be familiar with the black screen before. When you go black, usually what you're trying to do is you're trying to take the audience's attention away from the slides so they go on you, the presenter. So in those really powerful moments where you really want them to just pay attention to you and not look at anything, you can do a black screen. But the other nice thing about the black screen is you can also draw on it so basically you ha now have a blackboard. So I can draw shapes and circles and you know all those things and that's kind of nice. You can also do the same thing with a white screen. So I can change this to a white screen and then basically I have a whiteboard to draw upon. Now, if you wanna erase everything, then you just, you go to the screen, erase pen and it all goes away. So those are just some of the, the nice features of presenting with PowerPoint is you have these abilities to still point at things and to also still be able to draw, draw on things, you know, Khan Academy style. So definitely use this, get familiar with it. Now that you've learned some software tips and tricks, the next part we're going to learn about is audience engagement techniques and an asynchronous presentation. I know you're still like baffled, like how can that happen? How can you have audience engagement in an asynchronous presentation? Well, that's why we're going to learn. So let's make this a little challenge. Let's put the thought and burden on you a little bit. What I want you to do right now is I want you to brainstorm how you can use the following audience engagement techniques in an asynchronous presentation. I'm going to give you a couple to think about. How might you do an imagination exercise in an asynchronous presentation? So just think to yourself, how, how could that happen? How about reflection exercises? How can you do a reflection exercise in an asynchronous presentation? How might you do that? How could you accomplish that? What about a discussion? Is there a way to do a discussion in an, uh, an asynchronous presentation? How might you do that? Think of it. What about polls? Is it possible to do a poll? in an asynchronous presentation when you're not able to see your audience? What about an audience recitation? Can you still do that when you're asynchronous? What are you gonna do, have people just say it when, when they want? Like, how does that work? Okay, well, think about it. Is, is it possible? Is it possible? And lastly, think, can you do think, pair, square, share in an asynchronous presentation? So if people are watching this at different times of the day, maybe in the comfort of their own homes, that's always how I think, I always think of, is this person, what would a person sitting on their couch, what would they do in this situation? So can you do a think pair square share if somebody's just sitting on their couch by, their self, by themselves at home? Well, think about it. So go ahead and pause this video for a second and just run through these. Is there a way to still do these in some modified fashion? So go ahead and pause the video and I'll wait a couple seconds for you to think. Okay, hopefully you paused the video and you took a time to really think about these. Let's go through some of the possibilities. First, close your eyes and imagine. And reflection exercises are both ones that I group together. Absolutely, you can still do these in a asynchronous presentation. Because the nice thing about imagination exercises and reflection exercises is all you have to do is tell them to do something and then they do it. So just say, imagine you are giving a presentation online and you're using PowerPoint. How would you handle the following situation? And then you just have them imagine the situation and then you go into it. Same thing with reflection. Think of a time when you were giving a speech and you forgot your lines. So just remember that time. When was the time where you forgot something in a speech? Or maybe you just forgot something generally in life. What was that situation? And how did you handle it when you forgot it? What cued your memory? Okay, so you just go into it. You do the reflection exercise. So that's the beautiful thing about imagination and reflection exercises is they don't require any high tech. You just tell the person to do it 
and they're naturally just going to do it. Or at the very least, you're gonna can, they're at least gonna think about it for a second and you're still getting them doing something. So imagination exercises and reflection exercises are totally still within fair game. What I would say is give them a little bit of time to actually do the exercise, have some pauses in there so they can really do the exercise. And even if they don't, still have a little answer for them to work off of. Secondly, you might be wondering, well, what about discussions? How do you do a discussion if you're not able to respond or answer anybody's questions? Okay, okay, well, how about this? You see this all the time on YouTube. People will say, write in the comments, such and such. See, even this guy right here, Park Lulney said, I, ha I have a presentation to give. And oh, look, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, Park Lulney. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I'm sure you're a cool guy or a person or girl, whoever. So anyways, uh, you just tell people to maybe write in the comments, such and such, such and such, or email me, blah, blah, blah. And then people can have the discussion without you being there. But another option that you have is you can also do polls. So... Now that you think, okay, I don't necessarily have to have the discussion in real time. I can just have like a discussion board associated with the, with the video. Well, what about polls then? Well, now some new opportunities come up. The first thing you can do with polls is you could just still run the poll. You just wouldn't be able to see the results. So you could say, how many of you have had given a asynchronous online presentation before? And you can say, and then as I say it, you might say, you might kind of raise your hand in your head. Or I might just say, have you ever given an asynchronous presentation before? If you have, you know, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you see how I left that pause in there and then I'm still asking you the question. I just phrase it a little bit differently. I just phrase it like as if I'm talking to you as an individual. And then you'll still, at least in your head, answer the question, even if you're not fully raising your hand. But then you have another option you could run a poll, like a live poll, but here's how it would be different asynchronously. You would run the live poll, but you would keep it up during the lifetime of the video of however long it's posted. So you could have a poll that's constantly running, and then you could tell people while you're giving the asynchronous presentation, log on to this and put your answer in the polls, okay, or in, in the poll website or the live poll. And then your audience members can at least see how other people are responding to the poll. Now, in that case, if you use like a live polling software or if you use like a Google form, so you could do the same thing with a Google form, you could have people fill it out and then make it so that they can see the results after they fill out the form. What you would do asynchronously is you would just kind of preemptively talk about what you expect the results to be. Or you can talk about, depending on what it is that you're having them do, like if it's like a test, like what's your flirting style, for example, you could talk about the results of each style. And if like, if you landed in, in these results, here's probably what happened. If you landed in these, these other results, here's what's probably happened. So you just sort of anticipate what the results of the poll are going to be. And then you just address them ahead of time in your actual video presentation. So you can totally run polls. It's different than like an asynchronous or different than a synchronous presentation where you're not responding to it in real time, but you're still creating that opportunity and then people can do things and then you just preemptively talk about what the results would probably be. But what about the next one? Audience recitation. So you're not in a room full of people. So how are you going to be able to get people to recite stuff? Well, just think of it again as I'm talking to an individual. Take the very common saying, what must come up must come down. We've heard that saying before. Now, if I want to do an audience recitation in an asynchronous presentation, I would do everything that I would need to do to make sure that would work. I would seat it early. I would make sure it's repeated at least, you know, two or three times throughout the presentation so the audience is trained to know this response. And then all you do when it's time to do the recitation, is you just go, what must come up, must come. And I leave that pause there. And even if you're not outwardly saying down, you know, like that kind of stuff, like you're still in your head, filling in the blank. And then you're still involved in the presentation because at least in your head, you're still being engaged. Now, what about the last one? Think, pair, square, share. You're probably thinking, well, 
if I'm watching this by myself, then I can't thank Paris Square Share. Okay, well, yes, if you're watching this by yourself, there's going to be some differences. Now, it would be nice if, like, the whole family got around the corner, you know, got around the living room and, you know, watched this lecture and you have your mom and your dad and your cat and your dog and you're watching this, like, family TV and then you can do Think Pair Square Share. That would be really great. And if you anticipate your audience does that, like, they, they're going to be in groups watching this, then you can just run Think Pair Square Share like you normally would and then you would just preemptively talk about what people might have came up with. Or you'd, you'd stack it with the discussion and say, now based on what you came up with, put it into the live poll or put it into the comments and let other people, future people, respond. But let's just say, once again, we're going back to that scenario where we're assuming that this is somebody watching it at the comfort of their living room by themselves. Well, the answer is you've already been doing it. If you're currently sitting in your room by yourself or you're sitting by yourself watching this, you just did the exercise. What I just had you do was I just had you do think. So I just had you think about it. I didn't have you pair, square, share. But at the very least, I said, brainstorm how you can do the following AETs. And then I gave you time to think. And then during that time, either you didn't pause the video, and in which case you just waited for the 10 seconds. But maybe you looked at the questions at least and maybe thought of one or two if you didn't pause the video. Now, some of you are studious and you did pause the video and you did actually do the challenge and that's good. You're a good student. I like you. Okay. Now, if you didn't do that, it doesn't mean I don't like you, but you know, it's just, you know, different levels of effort. Okay. Now think pair, square, share. You just do think. You just do think and it's still okay. We're still finding ways for you to get involved and it still makes the presentation engaging on that level. Now, in this first part of this series or this two-part lecture, we've covered three things. We covered software. We talked about different screen recording softwares because more than likely that's what you're going to be using to give your presentation is some kind of screen recording. Secondly, we talked about some presentation tips, clean your screen, vocalics, all of those things are going to matter when you do an asynchronous presentation. And then thirdly, we talked about audience engagement techniques. We went through quite a few of them, and there's no reason why you still can't use these even in an asynchronous presentation. Just the fact that you even try to use these things scores a lot of points with the audience. Now in part two of this lecture series, we're gonna talk about synchronous presentations. And I couldn't end a matrix themed PowerPoint presentation without some depiction of Neo. <laughs>